Corbin Brothers is back today in District 90, one of the most popular lander enclaves. You're smack between the Coven and Serangoon Garden lander enclaves. This is a true corner terrace status and if you're in the market for something under the $5 million quantum, come join us on another episode of our Landed Home Tour series. So now the plus point of being a corner terrace status is that on one side of the house, you're not adjoined to any other building structure and it's because of this reason and on top of the setback requirements, they're classed very similarly to the semi-detached type of houses. And a lot of times you'll see that corner terrace or semi-D houses, they still have another neighbour on one side of the property. But I think for this property, the very unique thing is that what we call a true corner terrace status, meaning that on one side of the property, not just the building structure is not adjoined to any other neighbour. And that's going to be a huge bonus if you really enjoy your privacy and you want maximum ventilation and natural lighting coming into your home. So now let's head into the house itself. This property is seated on a triple nine-year leasehold plot of land classed very similarly to a freehold status and over the past couple of years, we have seen a massive rise in demand of such type of landed properties and we think this is largely due to a few reasons. So first off is the scarcity of land coupled with a growing demand of space. So if we pull up the URA zoning of the entire map, you see the yellow colour denotes reserve sites and that basically means that there is very little in terms of reserve land for future developments. They may or may not be residential sites in future. What that means is that a very high percentage of available land will either be through on-block process or for sale from private owners. And being one of the private owners of such type of landed properties is extremely highly sought after. And because of this, this is a blue chip type of investment while at the same time meeting the growing needs for space. And another reason is due to the luxury of space that land the properties they deliver, there may be other types of private properties they may not be able to meet things like having your own private parking porch over here, luxury of these huge living and dining spaces, high ceilings, huge bedrooms, you have open utility yards towards the back for functional usages, you have gardens and also roof terraces that can accommodate a lot of hosting of family and friends. Another reason is the exclusivity that it brings, of course landed properties are only available to Singapore citizens and those who have special approvals from the LDAU authorities. And you also get to enjoy a low density environment with lesser neighbours. Now the width of your entrance is really wide which is what a lot of lender buyers really appreciate. It's a 9.1 meter frontage from wall up to maybe about this point over here but because there is a slight curvature, your actual width brings you closer to the 10 meter and what that brings you is that you can comfortably park two cars, lots of street parking space on the other side of the road so not to worry if you have guests or friends coming over. What this also creates is that you can have a very wide type of entrance into your living room space and this creates a very grand feel. As we step into the house, you already can see the expanse of space that this living room brings. Ceiling height is 3.2 meters. In terms of the width, that's 6.6 .6 meters. And in terms of the depth, that's about 6.2 meters. And that can now accommodate up to a 7 or 8 seater U-shaped couch in this area, just like the setup that we have here. And then right on this side, your TV feature wall already built in. You can do up a projector set over on this side and then that displays on the entire white wall over here. A lot of flexibility in terms of the usage of this space. So this dining space is very nicely integrated to your living room to create this entire huge communal zone over here. Yet at the same time, if you want to create a separation between the living and dining space, there is already two party walls over here that kind of separates the space and if you want to, you can do up a glass panel over this side together with a sliding door if you want to fully separate the space. Size-wise over here, now it's fitted with a huge circular 8-seater kind of setup. So if you want to do the rectangular type of dining setup, I think here you can easily accommodate an 8 or 10-seater type of zoning. And then right over here, this is where it's currently fitted with a fridge over here. You can put a few fridges over here or do up a bar counter kind of space and add on to a very luxurious feel to your communal space. 
before we check out the rest of the home, let's pull out the floor plan and see what we have in this layer over here. So on level one, your entrance with that white frontage or your front porch, you can park two cars over there easily. You have your integrated living and dining rooms. You have a common bathroom, a granny room, a dry wet kitchen towards the back and then of course the side garden along the stretch of the home. Moving up to level two, you have a family room and two ensuite bedrooms, both with balconies and heading on to level three, you also have two more ensuite bedrooms. This is the powder room over here, which of course has a shower already inbuilt, so you can easily convert this into a proper bathroom if you want to. A bit of understair storage over here, so quite a generous amount of space in there. So stepping into this granny room over here, of course this serves as a common bedroom as well. This easily caters, of course, if you have elderly parents that are staying with you. And I think for this space around, it's decent as well. You have a super single size, lots of space for you to do up more wardrobe space and cabinet space on this side. But if you need a double bed kind of setup, what you can do easily is just to switch the orientation of the bed, both headboards facing towards this direction in this manner. Then you can fit in two single beds in terms of the width already and then still lots of cabinet space to be done on that side. Your dry kitchen type of setup that you have over here, mainly used as a washing and basin area and for smaller food prep kind of cooking. This is where the current owners they use for the heavy cooking. This is the wet kitchen type of space. And that's really important to keep the entire wet kitchen space well ventilated towards the rear of the house. All your main cooking area will be on this side, a bit of storage space under here as well. And then on this side will be more of your food prep area and your wash basin. And I think perfect amount of size for a laundry zone if you want to do up those hanging racks or if you want to do the standing racks over on this area, sufficient amount of space. And then some of you might ask, how come is the rear of the house narrower than the frontage of the property because we are located on a landed zone that is a triangular plot of land and I think the plus point of having this type of land is because your interior layout now you can use most of the floor space for your hosting area your living and dining space which is located towards the front portion of the house and that maximizes the functional use of the floor space over here so this land plot is seated on 2822 square feet of land frontage again is about 9 to 10 meters in terms of the width your plot depth is about 33 to 34 meters on both sides of the wall. Let's say maybe 10 to 20 years down the road, your family grows, you want to do a full review on this property. We are located in a zoning that has no number of stories restrictions. Then this house can easily be rebuilt into a three and a half story type of layout and then you can easily maximize, I think on this plot of land, you can easily fit in seven, eight bedrooms minimally if you have a full three and a half story type of layout. Coming up onto level 2 right over here of this property itself, this is your family zone over here that can double up as maybe the kids living room as a play area entertainment zone or even if you want to do a full home office for your work from home needs that can be done as well. This is functional if you need a bit of balcony space, you don't have to go into any of the bedrooms or go downstairs to head outside, you already have a small balcony space on this side. So master room, lots of panels of wardrobe space has been done up right on this side. And this feature wall over here, that separates your main resting space away from if you want to do a work from home office type of setup on the other side. And then this can also double up as a TV console space if you want to. Towards the left portion of the room, you have a very nice charming balcony over on this side and then full panels of window space located all around the corners of the room. You have a walk-in wardrobe on this side over here and then that brings you in to the ensuite bathroom. Very similar size to the other bathrooms, the only difference we see maybe is that it has a wider width in terms of space over here, lots of storage space and then there's a huge generous amount of shower area done with that rain shower as well. So now let's head outside and talk about the location of where we are at. So we are located right along Glasgow Road in the Coven Lander and Clave. We are right between the Coven MRT station and Serangoon Gardens area. And that means that we are in a very peaceful and quiet Lander estate. Basically, the only people passing through in terms of the roads over here are the residents in this area and their guests. There are two main entry points right along Upper Serangoon Road and Yo Chu Kang Road and plenty of bus stops right along those main roads. Nearest MRT station is about 850 meters away. That's Coven MRT station. From Coven MRT 
MRT station, there's one stop to Serangoon. That is the interchange to the Circle Line and that's where you'll find the Mega Mall next. Two stops down, that will take you to the Bishan MRT station and that is the interchange to the North-South Line. You also have other upcoming developments like Serangoon North MRT and Tavistock MRT within the vicinity. That will be slated to complete by the year 2030. On nearby amenities, you can head over to Serangoon Garden Way, lots of eateries and F&B establishments over there. There's also a supermarket. Alternatively, you can head over to Coburn MRT Station. That's where you're going to find Heartland Mall and Coburn Aukang Market and Food Center. Lots of primary schools within the vicinity. Within one kilometer, you have Zhonghua Primary School and within a two kilometer radius, you have Singming, Rosai, Paya Lebar Methodist Girls, CHIJ, Yangzhen, Aukang, Montfort Junior School and Holy Innocence Primary School. So now let's head into the other side of the second level which is the rear portion of the house. Over here you have an entrance to the ensuite bathroom. And I like where this ensuite bathroom has been placed because the facing is away towards your main resting space and then that creates a nice separation over from your bed space. Size-wise within this bedroom, very decent in terms of size for a landed house. This is a queen size bed, easily you can accommodate a king size bed as well. And then over here, you can do a more wardrobe space or even a one-seater couch over here that can convert into a home office space. Over here, there's something that's an additional bonus. Again, you have another balcony over here that's just the right size. It doesn't take too much floor space, yet at the same time, provides the necessity of a bit of outdoor space for a quick breather. This definitely provides the additional layer of comfort for your bedroom space. We're having a change in scenery in our PLB studio before we head back to tour the home because right now, we're about to crunch out some numbers. So if you're going to do just basic renovations and interior refreshment, usually just about 50 to 100 PSF in terms of your build-up space that you're going to do. If you're going to do some addition and alterations, alter the layout a bit but maintain the structure of the home, then we are maybe looking at about 150 to 250 per square feet on the built-up space. And the last one, which is the most major work, which is reconstruction or you're doing a full rebuilding of the home, then we are looking at maybe about 300 to $450 per square foot in terms of built up space that you are going to do. Now the property that you are buying into maybe does not require any works. It's pretty much in a brand new kind of state or the owners pretty much redone the entire home just a couple of years back. Then of course it saves you the hassle but of course the premium has already been tagged into the property price itself. So the big question that a lot of our viewers have also been asking is should I go into a brand new landed property or should I buy into something that is maybe a bit more older in age and pump in my own renovations, a, a or even rebuild the home. We just broke down into four categories of landed property. So the first one, if we look at the surrounding areas, something of a similar land size, about 2,008 square feet, they are coming in at about $3.6 million in terms of the asking tag on the market. If you add in the cost of rebuilding, let's take $350 per square feet to rebuild on 4,000 square feet of build-up space. That brings the total rebuilding cost to about $1.4 million. A full rebuild probably will take you about one to two years of rebuilding time. So you need to factor in your rental as well. Let's factor in about $8,000 a month in terms of rental. And that brings your total cost to about $5.2 million. Moving next into category 2, that's addition and alteration. So a a works, maybe something about 20 to 30 years of age. Structure is in good condition, but maybe you want to expand the space a bit more. Land size, again similar, 2,008 square feet. They are going at about $4.4 million. You add in the cost of a a that's about $800,000 to a $1 million plus a rental of maybe up to a year. That brings your total close to $5.5 million in terms of your total cost. For Category 3, which is our unit here at Glasgow Road, just requires a bit of interior renovations just to refresh the space. Land size 2,822 square feet, built up of about 4,000 odd square feet in terms of floor space. Realistically, $200,000 should be able to cover it, but let's put $300,000 as a conservative estimate for renovations to be done to refresh the interior. Factor in about three to four months of renovation works, and that brings us to just a hair over $5 million at about $5.1 
And last category, the brand new type of landed property that has been freshly rebuilt by developers. Those in the area are going at close to the six odd million dollars range. So four categories of landed properties over here. There's no one that is better than the other. I think it's really dependent on what is your requirement today. But I think right now, having a ground view of the market, a lot of the buyers in the market are also getting the sentiments that the category three type of landed properties are one of the most popular ones. Why this is so is because basically there is a lot of cost savings to buying into a category three type of landed properties. I think realistically just about two to three hundred thousand dollars in terms of renovations will be able to refresh the interior of the home. You don't need to do any ANA, you don't need to hack any of the walls. So I hope that answers your question in terms of what is going to be most suitable for your approach into the landed segment. Let's head back into the home itself. We are on level 3 right now. On this level, there's two ensuite bedrooms. Also very generous in terms of size. All the fixtures have also been very well maintained. This is pretty much still in moving condition. Two single bed frames over here, one on each side. And then over on this side, there is a study table. So I think this type of setup is perfect if you have two kids who want to share the same bedroom. Or if not, this one can double up as a guest room if you have guests coming over to stay. So I think for this bathroom, also very decent in terms of size. Very healthy amount of shower space. You have the WC and then your storage cabinets under the sink. Ventilation windows has already been catered for as well, which is a must. As we go, we flow into each other. Let's head over to the other side. There's the second ensuite bedroom, quite significantly larger in terms of size. Up to you how you want to lay this out. Right now, it's set up pretty much as a home office type of space. If you want, this side over here can be done as a study area or a small living room space. And then over on this side, this is where you can fit a bed frame if you want to convert this into the bedroom. You can cater a small wardrobe space or if you want, you can even do a walk-in wardrobe type of concept on this area over here. So let's check out now the ensuite. Very large in terms of size. You have plenty of storage space catered for under the sink as cabinets. Then you have the backlight behind this full panel mirror. Shower size is decent as well and then window space again catered for ventilation purposes. Now let's go over and check out my favourite part of this bedroom over here. So this is your own patio or roof terrace. I think the potential benefit of having this room over here is that you can maybe convert this into a full hosting area if you want to open up this, I think Fullerton classy looking type of door panels over here. And then it just opens up your space. You can do an interior living space over here. And then over on this side, you can do outdoor seating area. Very nice for hosting space. And I think a really great bonus is that this is a southeastern facing from the frontage. That means the west facing it towards the rear of the house. You don't get afternoon sun shining onto your roof terrace or into your bedrooms itself. So now let's dive deeper into the pricing portion for this house. This property asking price is at $4.75 million for a triple nine year pure landed property. If we take a look at some of the surrounding new launches, Parkwood collections, a 99 year leasehold strata house built up about 4,800 square feet in terms of size. Those are already asking at $4 million onwards. If we take a look at the Gazania, one of the freehold new launches as well, 1,008 to 2,000 square feet penthouses, they are going at about 3.5 to 3.9 million dollars. For the Lilium, another freehold new launch, four bedrooms, about 1,008 to 2,000 square feet, they are already going about 3.5 to 3.8 million dollars. Now the next portion of this trifecta, that's the PSF basis. So based on a $4.75 million, that equates to a land PSF of 1683. Based on a built up of about 4,200 square feet, that equates to a built up PSF of just about 1,001 PSF. Let's take a look at some of the resale freehold condos in the area. They are all going averagely at about 1,005 to 1,007 PSF. And those can be located at Trilif. Bliss at Coven and Tembusu. And the last portion of this trifecta is the size. This is seated on a 2822 square feet plot of land. And I think this really sits right in that perfect sweet spot in terms of meeting the needs for space, yet at the same time keeping the overall entry quantum very palatable. <laughs> Okay. 
So just to sum up, this house this is seated on a 2822 square feet of land, about 4,200 odd square feet in terms of build up space, 5 bedroom, 5 bathroom type of layout, the perfect layout that landed buyers will want. This is something that you don't want to miss out. The asking tag is $4.75 million. Basically what you just need to do is just a bit of interior renovations and then you're good to move into this layout. If you like this property and want to take a look, do a range of physical viewing with our listing manager. The contact is right down below. Do give us a like and subscribe and follow us for our next upcoming home tour content. We are also on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. My name is Gavin Chan, Property Lim Brothers. Always happy to show you the place. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct, eight seater that are set up. Ah. Wait, the fly attacking me. And the car very distracting.